it is time for our last chapter of The Chocolate Touch, Chapter 12. The front door was open, and John had rushed into the living room where he had left his mother. She was not there now, but on the chair was a small, wet lace handkerchief. John ran into the dining room and onto the kitchen. As he came to the kitchen door, he heard the ring of silver against a teacup, and he saw a wonderful sight, his mother, arranging coffee things on a tray. He dashed into the kitchen and flung his arms around his mother's waist, sobbing and laughing with the relief of joy. There, there, said Miss Midas, stroking the hair from John's forehead. You've had a very disturbing day, dear, but in a few minutes we're all going to have supper and everything will be fine again. Goodness, I do believe I need some coffee myself. I felt so strange just then in the other room. I really don't know what came over me. The front door from the garden opened, and Mr. Midas came in. Before we settle down, Mrs. Midas said, John, have a good glass of cold milk. You look so hot. So, they didn't know what had happened to her. Well, John thought he certainly wouldn't scare them by telling them. He watched gracefully as his mother took a frosty blue jug from the refrigerator and poured it from a glass full of icy, creamy milk. Trembling with nervousness, John tilted the glass against his mouth open. The liquid flowed in and down his throat and remained purely milky, deliciously milky, tasting nothing but fresh, clean milk. After the long, wonderful gulps, he suddenly recalled that he had not thanked the storekeeper for saving his mother. Mother, he said, may I go out for a minute? I'll be right back. All right, John, she said, but supper will be ready in ten minutes. Don't keep us waiting. John ran briskly down the street until he came to the corner where he had always turned right when he was going to Susan's house. There he turned left and started along the two blocks of unfamiliar streets leading to the candy store. Soon he came to the corner where the Red Vic building had been. There was no building and no store, and of course, no storekeeper. In the corner lot, there was nothing to be seen but a heap of rusty tin cans and broken bottles surrounding a signboard with new lettering that said, sold. That is the end of our book. I hope you guys enjoyed. I have our last set of comprehension questions. Question number one. What did John accidentally do to his mother? A. Made her sick. B. Turned her into chocolate. C. Made her angry. Or D. Ruined her food. Question number two. When the chocolate store reappeared, what was unusual about its windows? Question three. Explain what John gave John the ability to find the coin. Question four. What part of John's sickness was cured when he started to show? A. Concern for others. B. Fear of the disease. C. Chocolitis. Or D. A dislike for chocolate. Number five, our last question. Do you think John will eat as much chocolate now? Why or why not? I hope you guys enjoyed this book. Have a great day.